Well, they call it the wall, the cornerstone of Donald Trump's candidacy and immigration policy. Take a look. You can see the border between the United States and Mexico is nearly 2,000 miles long, four states. So building a wall brings up a lot of logistical questions, like who's going to pay for the massive price tag, not only the materials, but the labor as well. And as we have heard for more than a year now, here's Mr. Trump's answer. Mexico will pay for the wall. Hundred percent. They don't know it yet, but they're gonna pay for the wall. And they're great people and great leaders, but they're gonna pay for the wall. Well, Mexico. Mexico's president has said not so quick, but leave the pain for it aside for a moment. Let's figure out if the wall is really the solution to our problem. Somebody who knows a lot about the border area, Mike Fisher, former chief of the Border Patrol. Appreciate you being here, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. As you look at the as Donald Trump's plan and you think about a wall, is this do we need a physical wall or do you sort of need a, meta, a metaphorical wall of sensors, aircraft, border patrol agents, some places a wall, some places using the Rio Grande to secure the border? Well, Leland, I think, um, first of all, again, thanks for the opportunity to comment on this. Uh, the border environment is very complex, and, and so too are the solutions to keep this country safe. Um, there are areas of high risk along the border with Mexico um, that would require and still require today uh, a wall or a fence. Um, uh, conversely, there are other sections along the uh, border with Mexico that uh, don't require a physical barrier of some sort. Um, but in all cases, situational awareness um, will have to be achieved. How much of this for the Border Patrol and for the brave men and women who are out there in the 100 degree heat day in, day out, trying to keep folks from coming across illegally? How much of this is, shall we say, a capabilities problem? There's not enough money, there's not enough resources. And how much of this is a policies problem of the Obama administration simply not making border enforcement a priority and giving you the tools you need to be able to stop folks? Yeah, th that's a really great point. As a matter of fact, um, uh, what I've talked to agents before is, you know, we're not going to enforce our way to a secure border. Um, when, when people decide to come into this country illegally between the ports of entry, um, they will continue to do so as long as they believe that the benefit um, outweighs the cost. Um, and whether that means being able to physically cross the border and all the way through to um, a final disposition in the immigration court system. Uh, so yes, it is capability um, um, at the border. Um, both in terms of personnel, both in terms of technology, both in the quality and, and quantity of uh, detection and monitoring equipment, uh, to be sure, and then the policies that we adopt as a country in terms of what do we do once an individual is detected, is apprehended, um, and the length in which they're able to stay in this country pending um, an adjudicated uh, a final disposition uh, by the courts. Are there a lot of b Border Patrol agents who are pretty frustrated in the sense that oftentimes they're down there, they're working hard, they grab people, and all of a sudden, two, three, four weeks later, it's, it's like going back all over it again? It's deja vu? Well, I'm sure there are frustrated Border Patrol agents out there. I know as a young agent, there were times that I became frustrated. But at the end of the day, um, having uh, worked with these agents for almost 30 years, I'm very proud of the work that they do um, each and every day to protect this country. Um, and although uh, they have their own opinions in terms of, of what this country has done and will continue to do in that regard, when they put on the uniform, they are protecting this country. They know that. They realize that. Uh, they're su the supreme professionals in what they do. Um, and I've got all the confidence in their ability to keep us safe. Well, and you, po you point out sort of th this issue that I I if there is a desire, if there is a will, if there's an economic reason to come to America, people will find any way to do it. You build a wall, they might build a tunnel. Here's uh, former General Barry McCaffrey on that very issue, saying the Border Patrol has done an incredible job given its resources, but it would be a stretch to say that the border and border communities are secure when the agency lacks a high confidence ability to detect cross-borders tunnel tunnels, no wall is going to fix that. And we've seen, obviously, them use, smugglers use tunnels not only to get people across, but get drugs across as well. 
That, that's, a, that's a great point. And, and all of respect, um, I have a lot of respect for General McCaffrey. And, um, and he's right. Um, the, a physical wall or a fence in and of itself um, isn't going to stop uh, people from attempting entry into the United States. Um, it, never, it never has. Um, but one of the things that we look at in a risk-based approach, for instance, is what makes sense on different sections of the border. What is uh, the known threat, for instance? Uh, to what extent are we vulnerable um, among a lot of different avenues in which people try to enter this country illegally? So there's not a uh, one-size-fits-all solution, um, regardless of how one characterizes a secure border. I didn't hear this from any of our producers. Are you supporting anybody for president, either Mr. Trump or Mrs. Clinton, actively? Uh, I am not at this point, no. All right, so, so, so let me get, ask you to do a little bit of analysis here for me. Is what Donald Trump is proposing, really securing the border and stopping the flow of illegal immigration into the United States possible? Number one, is it possible to do at the border? Number two, is it possible, to your point, to stop the economic incentives, to change policy enough that people don't want to come here illegally and are willing to wait to come here legally? Uh, y yes to both of those. I have uh, reviewed his recent 10-point uh, plan. I think each one of those in and of itself and then collectively um, will have a uh, positive effect in our ability to uh, secure the border. And, and, and policies, uh, regardless of which uh, candidate wins um, in the coming years, I think will also dictate the extent to which people believe um, that crossing the border illegally still has um, uh, the benefits outweigh the cost. And I think that will remain to be seen. All right, Mike Fisher, former head of the Border Patrol, we appreciate your service and also your candor here today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.